Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are excited to bring you this overview on ETAP 22. So let's go ahead and get started. Star protection and selectivity allows you to gain insight into line protection, relay performance, and evaluate system-wide protected device operation. AutoStar, or Automated Coordination Evaluation, has been improved to allow you to do this evaluation beyond the minimum time. And all protected devices are now supporting user-defined fields. These user-defined fields allow you to extend each component, such as a relay, fuse, low-voltage circuit breaker, and include parameters for those devices that are not commonly used in protection and selectivity. And by doing so, you minimize the risk and you close the gap when you go from design into commissioning that particular device. By including functions within the device during design phase that are not traditionally used in protection and selectivity, you are able to generate a complete report with a comparison of the user-defined fields such that this report is given to the commissioning engineer and he can establish or set up that device comprehensively from a single source of truth. This avoids any errors made during commissioning and any subsequent unforeseen or forced outages that were created due to gaps between what was done during design and what was implemented during commissioning. Let's take a look at user-defined fields a little bit more in detail in ETAP 22. Each component, such as the protected device, has an asset or user-defined field. All your existing user-defined fields within ETAP have been converted into this easy to use and find uh, table. It includes common user-defined fields as well as device-specific fields. And these common and device-specific fields are driven through a template. So let's open up our template very quickly and observe what happens with one of these devices. Let's take our low voltage circuit breaker and we want to go ahead and add a new field, a new user defined field, and we'll essentially call this last maintenance date. And this is a type of field which is a date. We can go ahead and also put in a helpline here, which is enter date this device was last main. We can also add a device specific field and we can give it some uh, gen generic name just to give it uh, 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 some kind of understanding with some numeric value that goes from 0 to a maximum of 500. We can add another one which is uh, a list box that can have a value of uh, yes and no and this could be something as simple as a thermal uh, function which uh, is part of this particular uh, breaker but not necessarily used in any kind of uh, simulation uh, when it comes to protection or coordination and then of course within this template editor you can also go inside the data manager and within the data manager you can see all the the changes that exist for those components in base or revision. You can also go inside the report manager and export the user defined fields, including the two new fields that we just added that are device uh, specific. So we can open up our low voltage circuit breaker, go to the asset or user defined fields, and we can see our last maintenance date, which is a, a date type field, as well as our device specific fields. And in this particular field, which was a numeric field, if you type in 900, it will reset itself to the maximum value that we had established of 500. And the thermal function could be a yes or no. And since we had only included yes, a blank would imply no, and you can easy, easily select yes. And each of this data is then saved with this particular component uh, using its common user-defined fields as well as its device-specific fields. So using these user-defined values, you can expand the capability of your protected devices to host complete set of data that is particularly useful or needed, not just during design, but also during commissioning, such that you have a single source of truth in, in one common database. And these fields or values also interact or integrate with ePROTECT, which is a centralized asset management system 
that you can use for not only low voltage breakers, but particularly for relays as well. STAR also includes a brand new sequence of operation slider that allows you to essentially review the sequence of operation, especially for large and complex systems, in a very easy and convenient manner. Once you run the STAR sequence of operation, you essentially get the sequence of operation event list. From this list, you can pick a particular component and the program will essentially move the slider, letting you know at what time did that particular event happen, and this case happens to be at five seconds, and then also highlight and show you which device actually operated during that time frame. You can essentially pick another device, in this case it happens to be circuit breaker eight, which is tripped by overcurrent relay number seven. And the program will flash and indicate and let you know in the sequence, this is the first device that essentially uh, tripped in the, in the network. You can essentially move and navigate through the entire sequence uh, one by one, or you can simply turn on the automated sequence of operation where you can select uh, up to n number of devices to flash, press play, and the program will essentially walk you through the sequence such as numerically one, two, three, and so on, making it very easy and convenient to analyze the entire diagram at one shot or systematically focus or zero into the devices that you want to analyze in more detail. ETAP 22 has thousands of new enhancements, features, and capabilities. Thank you.